The story starts with the Wendt picking up a promo poster of what seems to be a medical experiment, taking advantage of the vulnerable people, claiming to give them some sort of purpose of a better life. This is exactly what happens when a homeless person covering himself under a piece of carton box finds this poster and becomes intrigued. Going quickly over the poster, the nature of this experiment is soon revealed as the organization conducting it is called Merkov Corporation, an evil organization that doesn't let any number of human life or sacrifice stop them from reaching their twisted goals. The writing incorporated within the poster also reveals a deceptive way they prey on the vulnerable and lure them to volunteer in their sick and twisted experiments, having the audacity to call this a charitable outreach. The logo at the bottom includes the year 1956, indicating the story of the game takes place in the 1950s, many years before the first and the second game take place. The protagonist thinking this is something that could improve his life, he is taken to the back of a van wearing a rag over his head to keep the location of the facilities a secret, which turn out to be a series of warehouses connected to each other in the underground. While in the back of the van, one of the volunteers speaks out that he's not supposed to be here when he gets severely beaten by a guard, depicting this organization's cruelty and sadistic tendencies. Arriving at the facilities, the protagonist observes the severity and barbaric experiments, if you can call it that, being performed on the volunteers as soon as his blindfold is removed. Realizing by now he made a big mistake coming here, stuttering and with whatever energy he's got left, his survival instincts kicking in. He begs for his life before a doctor covering her face with a medical mask puts on a monitor of a man by the name of Dr. Hendrik, Juliet Easterman, introducing himself as the patient's friend, who will help guide them through the painful experiments and trials, which he refers to as a journey. The doctor injects something into the protagonist which seemingly numbs and relaxes him so he wouldn't thrash around during the painful tests. The protagonist is restrained in a straitjacket and the doctors discuss how all of his public and private information have been collected, with the investigators who collected this information picking some information which the doctor refers to as nutty. We also find a very important piece of information here that the protagonist is good looking, which is always a plus in the most dire situations, at least having that going on before he takes his last breaths after enduring excruciatingly painful surgical procedures. The doctor also reading a form asking for the protagonist's permission to conduct these experiments displays the Merkov Corporation lies about all of their tests being voluntary, while in fact they kidnap many while refusing others to leave. The other doctor mockingly nods the protagonist's head to show approval of what's to come. That's when a night vision goggle is permanently drilled into the protagonist's skull so they can use it when they need to, displaying the organization has sinister plans for them. Having the option to choose between a male or a female character, the protagonist awakens in a highly monitored and fortified place consisting of a mock house with a sign ordering the test subjects to erase their past so they can become the new, ideal test subjects for the Merkov Corporation. In other words, a blank canvas that can be shaped or molded into anything they want. The nature of the tests and reason for night vision goggles are clearly unveiled here that the organization is running some sort of psychological and physical experiment, putting them in places specifically built and designed to trigger certain responses. The house is littered with several bodies of participants with animatronics and robotic mannequins engaging with the test subjects. The mannequins try to enforce the patients for getting their past and how they were raised. Trying to find a way out, the protagonist reaches the theater where he gets attacked by an electronic puppet before he gets away. This puppet is soon revealed to belong to an antagonist named Mother Gooseberry, who enjoys tormenting the patients in this experimental mock house. The house being full of deceased or dying participants, the protagonist collects his private and public records. Meanwhile, the protagonist gets attacked by someone who carries hallucinogenic chemicals, spraying the protagonist, which causes him to hallucinate and enter a state labeled as psychosis. In the state, the protagonist suffers from visions of a ghostly character known as the Skinner Man, which seems to be a warped and twisted version of Dr. Easterman, the mysterious doctor that pretends he's the friend of the patients. As being instructed to destroy his records, private or public, 
essentially becoming a ghost with a blank canvas with no past, present or future. Exactly how Mirkov Corporation wants it to be. The protagonist escapes a deranged mother gooseberry who refers to the mannequin children as her children in need of saving, while she refers to herself as mother. Getting to the shuttle in order to proceed further and maybe even escape, on a monitor, Dr. Easterman instructs the protagonist to punish the snitch who wanted to whistle blow on the organization and in return he would get his freedom. The shuttle stops at the Muck police station with the snitch tied to a wheelchair already prepared for the protagonist. While trying to find the snitch to pass his level of trials, the protagonist gets attacked by the pusher once again who has a fumigator, spraying a hallucinogenic gas which summons the scanner man. As it turns out, the pusher alongside many others like Mother Gooseberry were once test subjects themselves who turned out to be failures. But due to their abilities and being fully brainwashed under Merkov Corp, they were deemed to be suitable to be kept alive and thrown into the trials with newer test subjects in order to further torment them. These failed experiments are called the Experimental Population or X-Pops for short. There are three different categories for X-Pops, the prime assets such as Mother Gooseberry, specialists such as the Pusher, and typical grunts which are very common attacking the protagonist. And on the prime asset X-Pop we encounter here is Sergeant Lee Dan Coyle, who uses an electric baton which he uses to sadistically kill and assault other test subjects, which are referred to as reagents. The protagonist is then instructed to take the snitch to an electrocution cage and punish him in order to progress further. Being placed in a life or death situation, the reagent tries to survive, putting a begging and terrified test subject who is labeled as the snitch into the cage and killing him, whose only crime was seemingly whistleblowing on the cruel activities of Merkov Corp. This allows a terrified protagonist to leave the hostile police station with mentally broken down test subjects who have turned on other reagents, not having the time even thinking twice about the life he sacrificed to save himself. As the protagonist gets on the shuttle to get further into the trials, being too scared to even think what awaits him, he starts thinking about what he just experienced and the innocent life he was forced to take, seemingly being ridden by guilt. He hallucinates about Leland Coyle, the corrupt officer who tortured and killed reagents, being a sadist and a masochist and the vivid scene of the snitch being electrocuted. The new stage is the fun park which has the agenda of villainizing the children by displaying them as cruel and mindless murderers in order to condition the adults to punish the children. In here, the main antagonist is the prime asset ex-pop Mother Gooseberry who protects the mannequin children acting as a mother. The next trial program the protagonist enters is the orphanage where he is instructed to cleanse the children and teach them obedience to pass on to the next stage. The story ends here with more trials seemingly planned for future updates. Based on what we know already, the good folks in Merkov made a name for themselves trying every way possible to brainwash people and control them. Some of their well-known projects are the MK Ultra, where they polluted the water and tried to mind control people with some success. The biggest project on the other hand becomes the morphogenic engine and nanite swarm known as the Wall Rider which is activated through enduring extreme pain both physically and psychologically, summoning this entity through lucid dreaming. They also perform another big test in an Indian reserve where they use religion to control people and make them believe there is a doomsday coming. That is why they torture people to such degrees in order to activate this ability. In 1950s, however, where the trials take place, the reason behind torturing the reagent seems to be because of the era the story takes place in. The USA was in the height of Cold War and of course, trying to benefit from war, fear and death, they invest heavily in warfare and creating biological weapons. Hence why they recruit the so-called volunteered participants in order to test and prep them for the potential war, creating the so-called perfect soldiers or weapons to withstand the effects of war. The trials psychologically and physically challenge the reagents to the extreme, which I would say are far more severe than what a war could consist of. The performance of the reagents are observed and monitored in the trials, which are recreation of real-life environments rebuilt in a series of massive warehouses and tunnels, and the result of their performance is unveiled by the end of each trial. In intervals between each trial, there is a resting safe house where the reagents, the new test subjects, are fed, treated, and taken care of before they are thrown into a new nightmare fueled stage with severely unstable former test subjects, such as Sergeant Leland, 
Mother Gooseberry, The Pusher, and other X-Pop grunts. These X-Pops are effectively acting as speed bumps and enforcers challenging the reagents with the Murkoff employees studying their performance. Now taking a closer look at the antagonists, we have three different types of X-Pops as I mentioned earlier who lost their sanity from the amount of experiments performed on them. Labeled as failed experiments, yet used as obstacles to test the new test subjects. The low-level X-Pops grunts are the most common type of enemies that one can encounter. The next ones are the specialists who could be the big grunts, the pusher who induces hallucinations, the bouncer who hides in closets or lockers and attacks the protagonist, the screamer who lost his sanity that only screams in a corner, the big grunt who's simply big and strong and deals a great damage, and finally the imposter who looks similar to reagents but suddenly attacks them. The most valuable of the X-Pops are the prime assets which consists of Mother Gooseberry and Leland Coyle. Leland, who is a sadistic masochist, seems to have been a real police officer in the real life who had a twisted sense of justice and law enforcement, being cruel and punishing to whoever he deemed a criminal. This seemingly costed his job and career as he was no good to be a cop after multiple offenses and breaches, simply being corrupt. Somehow, he ended up in the Murkoff underground facilities, becoming what he is now, enjoying his deluded job as a sergeant murderer and torturer with no one batting and I, probably his ideal type of job being the psychotic cop he was. Finally, we have Mother Gooseberry, whose real name is Phyllis Flutterman, who used to be a children's show host, having a trusty puppet by the name of Dr. Flutterman, whom she also refers as Daddy at certain points. Seemingly, she had an abusive father in her real life as a child, which caused her to develop dissociative personality disorder. Although contained and not projected, possibly suffering internally, her mental health was pushed to the limit and over in the Merco facilities, becoming a monstrous version of herself. Once a caring and loving individual, empathizing with children and trying to protect them, she becomes the opposite of that, deluded and murderous, used as a brute to test the durability of the new test subjects known as reagents, doomed to live the rest of her life in this underground hellhole, living in a delusion that she's protecting the children against perpetrators. That is why she panics and rushes to the child mannequin's aid when she feels they are being harmed by the reagents. Reagents who are instructed to discipline the child mannequins and destroy them, specifically asked to do that to trigger Mother Gooseberry and anger her, so they can overcome her and challenge her and survive. We can even hear in the game many times that she shouts in an anxious manner that the reagents are hurting the children and that she needs to protect them, as she doesn't want the same thing that happened to her as a child by her father happen to the children. The ventrally quest dog puppet she carries is often referred to as daddy as it is also a representation of her abusive father, hence why having a dangerous drill covered in its mouth, a representation of how hurtful the words of her father was, being similar to a painful drill. The nightmarish Skinner man we also see during hallucinations could be a representation of Dr. Easterman, a horrifying mysterious person who runs the experiments, which has caused many of the test subjects see this monster as a warped and twisted version of Dr. Easterman hunting them and making them lose their sanity. Being a literal supernatural monster, someone who made these test subjects feel as such. Also the name, being close to Easterman, Skinnerman. Right folks, that's about it for this video. What are your thoughts and opinions? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host Dar, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.